Thanks all for joining. First of all, I don't know why the aspect ratio or something is off. I hope you can all see the slides. I'll put them online afterwards. I've also got a bit of a cold, so I hope you all can hear me and with all the excuses out of the way. Um, let me get started. Just a couple of words about me. I've been doing Hadoop for about 10 years now. Uh, consultancy, I'm a Hive committer, ORC um, as well, so uh, HBase contributor. So I've been working in the field for quite a, quite a long time. And um, you can reach me at yeah, last.frank at opencore.com or at Twitter or just talk to me afterwards. Um, so this talk is going to be about Hadoop security. Um, anything related to security, we're going to go into uh, details what that actually means. Uh, just be warned that I might have more questions than answers because some of the stuff is horribly undocumented and maybe you guys have answers uh, that I'm looking for. But first, um, two questions. So who here is actually running, running Hadoop or running Hadoop clusters? Are you guys... Okay, that's a, that's a good turnout. And who is running secure Hadoop clusters? Okay, that's maybe maybe twenty percent of the uh, of all the Hadoop clusters. Okay, and so uh, the, the title was a fence around your Hadoop cluster, which is usually not enough because that could mean just putting a firewall in front of your Hadoop cluster, which is usually not what you want. So it's obviously a bit more a bit more uh, involved than that, and it's also not enough to just read this book. I guess if you've been looking into this stuff, you stumbled across the Hadoop security book by O'Reilly. It's good, but it's very, first of all, focused on the Cloudera distribution, CDH focused, Impala and all that stuff, Sentry. It doesn't, I'm not sure if it, Ranger is even mentioned. Um, and it's a year and a half old, which means it's horribly outdated by now, but well, it's still good. The technical details about Kerberos and all that stuff are still good. So if you're looking for an introduction in book form, this is good. There's another book coming out soonish. I don't know, this year, next year, which is going to focus a bit more on the non-technical bits, like security architecture and so on, which um, might be of interest to you. And there's other sources. As I said, I'll put these slides online afterwards. Um, if you want to learn about Kerberos, there's a book in English. But actually, if you're, if you're German-speaking, there's a G G book which is just called Kerberos, single sign-on, something, something. It's in German, but it's, I like it better than the English version. So if you want to learn about Kerberos, this is good. Um, if you actually need to learn about Active Directory, then you know that you're, you're in big trouble, but it, 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 can, it can happen. So, um, because often the uh, Active Directory administrators don't know enough about Hadoop so that you have to learn Active Directory instead of them learning, learning the Hadoop bits. Anyway, um, I don't know if Steve is here. He's no. Um, so Steve from Hortonworks has like a Git book online. It's free, and um, it talks about the Im implementation details on how to use like from the API wise uh, how to use Kerberos and and to loop. And the last two are um, uh, like HBase. Uh, the book is going to talk about uh, security in HBase and um, bulletproof SSL and TLS. It's a really, 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 really detailed book about everything you ever or never wanted to know about SSL and TLS. Again, if it comes to that, I hope not, but if, if you need it, it's there. Okay, so how does a typical project run at companies, at larger companies, smaller companies often have a more like agile workflow, but anyway. Um, and where does Hadoop security come into play here? So the first step is usually the idea stage. We have an idea, we want to do something. We need a, we need a cluster or we, need, we have a product and, and we, want to, we want to do something. The next step is usually planning and designing. Like what, what, how, how can we achieve what, what we want to do? Like what, we have this big idea, how can we actually implement it? And this is usually, or this should be, correlated to your idea, you're your planning you're planning your idea. The problem is these two are often not in sync. Like someone has an idea, but how to actually, how, if this actually can be implemented in any way, at the idea stage, no one cares about it. And uh, we see this uh, with the security stuff as well. Like we have an idea, we want to do something, but are we even allowed to use the data we need or can we get the data from somewhere? I, I don't know. The le next step is uh, execution and implementation, and this is where usually the shit hits the fan. First of all, I mean, I don't know if you work at big companies, small companies, startups or anything, but there's often stuff like corporate guidelines, like which encryption algorithms are we allowed to use, what kind of data are we allowed to take out of the company and put into the cloud and, and whatnot. These kind of things 
can be incredibly detailed and often uh, horribly outdated as well. And it can be, there can be all kinds of stuff in there, like what kind of open source licenses am I allowed to use? I don't know if you guys come across this. You're not allowed to use the LGPL or you know, the, the GPL and only the LGPL or stuff like that. And all of a sudden you're crawling through source code trying to figure out what kind of license is my third party tool using. And the next step in a, in a project is usually the putting it into production, handing it over to some poor folks who have to actually handle, handle the stuff. I don't know in which category you guys fall in, but I'm sure there's some operations people here who actually had to take over a project and had no idea what, what to do with this piece of crap that they got handed. So when to start thinking about security in Hadoop? First of all, it's never too late. Or, well, it's never too early this way around. Um, often people say, we start with an unsecure cluster, and I see, I see this here, and the fact that you guys are looking into a Hadoop security talk means you maybe want to secure your cluster. And I hope it's not too late, because in my experience, it's often the easiest if you know that you need some security, and we're going to talk about what that actually means, security, then start as early as you possibly can, because otherwise you're going to run into problems later with some third-party tool that doesn't understand what the key tab is, or even your users who don't understand what a key tab is, and Kerberos and all that kind of stuff. So it's often easier to just get it over with in the very beginning, and then um, have the problems at the beginning, solve them at the beginning, figure out what maybe even doesn't work at all, and uh, replace some tools, because there are some tools like in the Hadoop ecosystem in Apache that, or outside of Apache, that don't even or support any security at all. And it's best to figure that out as early as possible. Um, in the talk description, I also said there's going to be stuff about uh, for business people in here as well. That was a total lie, or not, not a total lie. I just wanted to get those people here to hear what kind of pain we have to go through in the technical level to fulfill their s sometimes stupid criteria and that it's never too early to get the technical people on board in the project as well. Uh, because you guys, I hope that most of you are from the technical end, because then it's going to be more interesting for you. Because you guys can uh, actually say, this is going to work, this is not going to work, we need to, we need to change this, we need to do this and that. Um, and usually, putting on uh, enabling security is not just a switch that you, that you, that you turn on, like, Enable security. I mean, we're going to talk about the wizards that in, uh, exist later, but you need to talk to some AD guy in your company, get credentials for Active Directory and all that stuff. And that might be easy at a startup, but if you're working at like a Deutsche Bank or Visa or something, then you're not going to walk into, into the office of the Active Directory administrators and say, hey, you need an admin account to create users in Active Directory. Because then you're going to take, um, take a fall out of the window. So. Let's dig into the steps of each of these, or into the details of each of these steps. And I hope, uh, I promise it's going to get uh, technical and more detailed in a second. So in the project planning phase, you need to think about what am I going to use a cluster for? And which tools am I going to need to achieve these use cases? All too often, that's not, not being thought about in this, um, in this use case, uh, in this step of the phase because it's way too early to think about actual in implementation details and actual like, tools that we're going to use. But as I mentioned earlier, in my experience, that's not the case. If you're going to buy a million dollars worth of Informatica licenses and only figure out at the very end of your project that it doesn't support something like cross-realm trusts, which they don't, then um, it might be too late to switch. So it's never too late, never too early, I always mix these up. It's never too early to actually think about the tools that you're going to use later and um, make, make sure that they work, because don't plan for use cases for which no tools exist. And the last thing, or not the last thing, what kind of data am I going to ingest, store, or process? Um, you need to find the stakeholders or the data holders or whatever they're called in your company to actually talk to them and figure out, am I allowed to use this data? How do I get to this data? Do they want to part with this data? Who is, who is, who is allowed to look at the data and all that stuff? And um, organizations often categorize their data into multiple uh, categories, like sensitive data, personal data, all that kind of stuff. So you need to figure that out 
Um, because often these categories have impl implications on how do I need to um, secure them, how do I need to back up this data, do I need to encrypt this data, and so on. And that's um, very much part of what Hadoop security is, is all about. So it's, um, again, never too early to think about this. And last but not least, what kind of corporate guidelines do exist? Does my company like say which kind of encryption algorithms I'm allowed to use, how many bits of, of like key size um, and, and so on. This stuff happens, especially like uh, at financial institutions or insurances and so on. Sometimes it's not even the corporate guidelines, but sometimes it's in the law or some, some EU guideline or some, something like that where they say, sorry, <coughs> where they say what you have to do and um, how you have to secure your data. Again, don't just find this out when, you're, when your project is already running. Try to be proactive about this. Try to find out as early as you can. And this next slide is something that I learned the hard way. Do not assume that anyone you're going to talk about at any third party, first party, second party, or whatever vendor does know anything about what they're talking about, even their own product. If you're going to some, some company and they're going to sell you a big ETL tool or some, I, I don't know, some big data masking tool or whatever, don't assume that these sales guys have any idea about Kerberos or SSL or TLS or encryption algorithms. They're going to tell you, yes, obviously it works with a secure Hadoop cluster. But pin them down, ask them, does it really work? Our environment looks like this. Can you guarantee that it works? Because, as I said, and I'm not shying away from naming names, Informatica, for example, that's horrible. They have no documentation on what they support, IBM the same. And they have no documentation about how, how this stuff works, what it works with, what kind of features they support, and some, some of the stuff doesn't work. Again, cross-realm trust. I don't know if that means anything to you guys, but that's not important right now. These kind of things happen in real organizations all the time, and it's just not supported. So don't assume that anyone who talks about, yes, we, we support Hadoop security knows what they are talking about. As we'll see, Hadoop security is, is a very big topic, and chances are you're not even talking about the same thing. So what is part of Hadoop security? Authentication of users. You need to know who, who you're talking to, who's using your product. Because uh, in 80% your, in of these clusters in the room, apparently, you can just go to Hadoop and say, hey, my name is Lars Franke, and I want to do this and that. And Hadoop is just going to take your word for it. And same, I can just go and say, export Hadoop username, HDFS, and talk to HDFS, and HDFS is going to say, well, perfectly fine, you're HDFS, you're the super user, you can do anything. So in your clusters, the unsecured clusters, you can do just anything. And you don't need to have any authorization or encryption or anything like that in your cluster enabled, because if I can just say I'm any, any kind of user, then I can just circumvent all other security measures. So first, sorry, <coughs> you need to authenticate your users. And you need to do the same, look at the same support stuff again in your third party tools that you're using. They need to authenticate their users and so on. Next step is authorization of users. I'm now authenticated. Yes, you are Lars Franke, but what the hell are you allowed to do? Are you allowed to drop this database or not? That's the next step. Then we have auditing. You want to know later what did this guy do? He left the company. We had just said this uh, a week ago, so some Finnish or, or something um, provider lost all the data because a disgruntled employee uh, deleted the, or ex-employee deleted all the data. So you need to have auditing. What did this guy do? When, when did he do it? Why did he do it? You won't find out in the logs, obviously, but you have at least a trail of what someone, what someone did. So you need, you need to have this auditing enabled. Next, you might, again, depending on your guidelines, your requirements, data uh, protection, encryption on the wire. You need the data that's going over your network need to, needs to be encrypted or not. I don't know. It depends on your guidelines and what your requirements are. And last but not least, uh, encryption at rest. At some point, if you're going to use HDFS and other tools, we'll see that later, your data is going to end up on a hard drive. Does it need to be encrypted there? Do you trust your admins the, who have root access to your servers? I, I can't answer that for you, but if you don't, for example, because your servers are outsourced to um, some other company, and you don't trust those guys by policy or whatever reason, then you might have to encrypt your data. Um, and which granularity do you need? What about metadata on your disk? 
like log files can contain sensitive data. Select star from where credit card number equals something something. And if that SQL statement ends up in a log uh, file and your sysadmins can read that file, it might contain sensitive data. Next step in the project, the execution. And this is where, where it gets meaty. Some people think, and I don't know, maybe in this room as well, that um, Hadoop security means I need to enable Kerberos and I'm done. Far from it. I mean, it could be the case. Kerberos brings you the first thing in this list that we had. It brings you authentication of users. If that's all you need, and you're fine with all the other stuff uh, that's built in, then, then that's good. But I, d I don't know. I mean, you can answer that for yourself. I'm happy to talk about that later. But uh, lots of companies, lots of projects um, need more than that. Authorization, uh, protect data protection, and so on. Um, but before all of that, before you're able to secure anything, you have to have something that needs to be running. Like you need a loop cluster actually up and running that you can secure. And for that, we have this whole layer of, of things. I, I don't know if you can read this. So I'm going to read this out. We have per parameter security, data center, network level, host level, core Hadoop stuff, applications on top, clients that access uh, the Hadoop cluster. The first thing, per parameter security. If someone has physical access to your servers and your data is unencrypted on the hard drives, then you can just pull out the hard drives and get your data. Then all the, all the other stuff, all the other layers don't, don't matter much. If you don't trust the people in your data center, this is something, um, again, you don't, might not want, want to think about, but some guidelines might uh, make you. Network level. This is something we often see. We have multiple VLANs. We have Hadoop, Master, and Workers, and we have a firewall around this. Called, and no firewalls inside the cluster, like the eggshell security model. We have a, a hard shell and a soft, soft inner, inner part of the cluster. It's more or less an anti-pattern, because if someone is in your network, and then they can do anything. But with Hadoop, it's so complicated to uh, secure everything, all the ports, uh, to have a firewall uh, configured with all the ports, you won't find a complete list of all the needed ports for Hadoop cluster online. And I'm going to bet you on that. If you do, let me know, and I'm going to buy you a case of beer or what whatever. It's, it doesn't exist. Documentation for n these tools is basically non-existent. You won't find up-to-date documentation on which ports. And that's why we have this model usually. No firewalls within the cluster, a big firewall around it and multiple VLANs with uh, gateway, NOx, CLI, and these kind of stuff, ingest nodes that um, have holes in the firewall. Also, don't put your cluster on the public internet. You just need to look at some string. I don't know what distributions you guys are running. Take some random string from Cloudera Manager or Ambari that appears in, in the menu and search for it on Google. You find tens of unsecured Hadoop clusters that you can log in with admin admin. Don't, don't do that. It just happened at the beginning of this year, someone, someone did this uh, using web HDFS. Uh, they deleted all the data and clusters and just put up one, one folder. Um, don't leave your data unprotected, asshole, or something. And they deleted tens of, tens of clusters. was in the news as well. Um, next level, host operating system, SE Linux. Sounds like a good thing, but Hadoop distributions don't really support it. That's not quite true. They support it as long as you provide your own rules. No one does that. You need to have NTP crony installed. Uh, crony is the new stuff in, in, in later versions. Your clocks need to be synchronized um, because Kerberos relies on synchronized clocks. If your clocks are not synchronized, you cannot run a secure cluster. Firewalls, again, as I said, they should be disabled. Antivirus software, again, sounds like a good idea, but Disable it. We've seen clusters with antivirus software enabled, and it makes everything so slow, like tens, oh, tens, uh, a factor of ten or something slower. You need to have proxies figured out. Can I access access the internet in some way? Yes or no. This is something you need to figure out. The next step is Hadoop installation. Usually, you install a cluster manager first, like Ambari or Cloudera Manager. I don't know if any of you runs a bare, bare Hadoop, vanilla Hadoop from Apache. Pro probably not. I don't think it's a good idea, but, but, but who knows. Um, so which user does this run as? Usually, both of them run as root. Is this allowed? I don't know. You can run them as something else. 
which database does, does this access? How is the database secured? The content in there, because at least uh, Cloud Data Manager stores the key tabs in there, right, which are passwords, basically. And um, I also store other sensitive data. So you want to have your database on some, some server that's secure. Then you install the agents, Cloud Data Manager agent, Abari agent. Again, same question, which user do they run as, and how do these uh, agents communicate with the server? Unsecure, secure? SSL, TLS secured or not, with Ambari, you get this by default. Uh, by default, Ambari uses self-signed certificates um, automatically to communicate between the agents and the server, which is good. Cloudera, Cloudera doesn't do that by default, so you need to enable it manually. And you should do that before you enable security using Kerberos. And the last thing is uh, you install a distribution with lots and lots of components. I don't know if you've installed one lately, but you're getting tens of processes, tens of packages that you're going to install. And which user do they run as? By default, everyone in both distributions, Cloudera and Hotworks, I'm going to talk about those two because those are the main ones um, uh, that, that we see in our business. By default, they're running as separate users. HDFS runs as HDFS, um, Yarn runs as Yarn, and so on. Sometimes that's not allowed in companies. Sometimes it is. Um, the agents usually run as root. If they run as root, is it allowed in your company or not? Figure that out before you start. If it's not, you need to uh, run it in a non-root mode, which works in both distributions, but it works totally different. In Cloudera, it works um, in a single user mode, is what it's called, where everything runs as a single user. You have one Hadoop user, and all processes run as that Hadoop user. But that means that if someone breaks into your HDFS for some, for, for some reason and gets local access to your system, he now has access to all the other processes running as the same user. With Ambari, you have to have a sudo as file, which basically allows the Ambari agent to sudo to all these other users. And if you're running an IBM distribution, that includes something like um, a shell, which doesn't make much sense uh, in the security, um, uh, from a security viewpoint. And um, Last but not least, Ambari and Cloudera Manager usually have those um, default users, admin, admin. I don't know how many people of you have still have admin, admin as their username and password, but that's obviously something you should change. And ideally, for auditing reasons, I see some people smiling here, so I'm, I'm guessing I could, we could log into some of your clusters. Uh, ideally, you also want to have personalized user accounts, like, so you, that you can later see which admin did what. Like, if all of you share a user account, uh, all the auditing is, is useless. So next we have authentication. Um, as I said, without with, without strong authentication, oh sorry, yeah, um, Kerber, uh, Hadoop requires Kerberos for strong authentication. You've got multiple choices how to implement that. Um, which of these I can't tell you. It depends on your on your company. You can talk to a KDC directly. You can talk to Active Directory, and oh, you need to figure this out before you start. Uh, for most companies. For most larger companies, um, they uh, now go to oh, direct integration to central KDC, which means Active Directory. So how do I do this? We all have uh, Cloud Air Manager and Ambari have wizards to enable this stuff. And um, those wizards are good. You should use them. What you need for those is all this kind of stuff, names, IPs for your KDC, supported encryption types maybe. Um, it depends on your Active Directory version. Your firewall must allow all cluster machines to access the KDC. You potentially also need a bunch of other information to configure the KAB5 config uh, on your cl cluster properly, like um, your realm names and how those realms are connected and so on. All of those are details that you need to figure out before you start, otherwise you're going to run into problems. As I said, they have um, wizards, and both of these wizards and both of these products have uh, two options, a manual and an automatic options. The automatic option means that you're getting an account from your KDC Active Directory team, an account that is allowed to create other users in your Active Directory. In lots of companies, that's not going to work because that's against policy. Um, but if it's allowed, you also need to talk LDAP S, which means um, you need probably need a certificate chain to talk to that, um, to that uh, Active Directory because it's usually some company CA that's uh, signing these. And you need an HTTP principle, which does, sometimes doesn't meet corporate guidelines because there are naming guidelines for uh, how accounts should be named in, in, a, in Active Directory and so on. And so if you can't do this, there's a manual option, but that means um, that you need to create all these users yourself. 
and you need to distribute the key tips yourself in Ambari or in Cloudera Manager, you need to provide a shell script that takes in a username and provides your location to a key tab. And you need one principle, so one user in your database for every service for every host. So let's say you have 100 hosts and you have five services. I don't know, Hive, Yarn, HDFS, Impala, and uh, I, don't, I don't know, something else, Uzi. No, Uzi doesn't make much sense. But, uh, anyway, so you've got five, so you need 500 users. So someone needs to go and create those 500 users in your, in your Active Directory. Someone's not going to be happy. So try to use the automatic option. Again, Kerberos is only part of the story because Nox, Cloudera Manager, Ambari, Ranger, Sentry, Hive, Impala, and etc. all have their own uh, authentication strategy. So you can log into a Cloudera Manager, and Cloudera Manager can authenticate you against a, a central LDAP or a central Active Directory. Same for um, Ambari, Ranger, Sentry, and so on. So you need to figure those out yourself as well. Next step is identity management. If you are using YARN, which I assume most of you do if you are having a Hadoop cluster, YARN, YARN executes your jobs as the user that submitted them. So if I submit a job Lars, as Lars Franke, it's going to use set UID Lars Franke and run the job under my, under my username on, on the local machines. But that means that my username must exist on all these machines, which usually isn't the case. So it's usually done using a tool like SSSD free or Centrify or the other tools, which I always forget the name, but those are the two that I see most, most commonly. Um, this is something to not forget when using Centrify. That doesn't mean that your users need to be able to SSH into the boxes, quite the opposite. It just means uh, that you need to be able to resolve those users on the, on the boxes. Again, you need to have the details needed to fetch all the users and group information from LDAPS, which might include SSL certificates and, and so on. Some solutions like uh, Centrify require domain joins to talk to your Active Directory guys. So it's not, it's not, it's not trivial. You need support from a network level uh, Active Directory team to a uh, host operating system guys and so on. Next step in the security story is something that you can't see very well here, impersonation proxy users. Hadoop supports this proxy user concept where something like, for example, Uzi is supposed to run a job for me. So I submit a job today and that's going to run next year. My ticket, which I submitted to uh, Uzi, will have long expired by then, but Uzi still needs to be able to submit my job to Jan next year. And that's what um, this proxy concept is for. So next year, um, what they are going to do is Uzi is going to authenticate against Jan, say, hey, my name is Uzi, I'm going to prove it to you. And um, I'm going to submit a job, but run it as the user Lars Franke, please. And now HDFS or Jan check in their configuration. Is Uzi allowed to impersonate other users? Yes or no? This is something to configure. Try to be, um, oops, sorry. Try to be as, restricted, as restrictive as possible and check the defaults for these settings because by default these are pretty, pretty wide sometimes. Next step is authorization. All tools have some form of authorization built in. HDFS has the uh, ACLs and uh, the normal POSIX stuff and so on. Jan has um, uh, the stuff on, on the queue level and so on. Um, and then there's Ranger and uh, Sentry, which promise cross-cutting, role-based access control functionality. So you can configure your uh, access control stuff in one central UI in the case of Ranger or on the command line in case of uh, Sentry and uh, only do it once. Sentry has one advantage over, over Ranger. It has some feature called HDFS synchronization, so you only tell Sentry, hey, this guy has access to this table. And Sentry figures out that this table is in this location in HDFS and automatically also grants me access to, uh, if you enable this feature, to the underlying files on the file system. In Ranger, you need to do it in two places. I need to get access to the table and you need to give me access to HDFS. And um, that's, that's that. Also, Ranger is functionality-wise much nicer, but it's, uh, I'm sorry, I hope no committer or something is in here, but it's a piece of crap in terms of code quality and documentation. It's 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 most horrible piece of code in the whole Hadoop ecosystem, more or less. Well, I, I say this about every second tool, every time I have to. And there's another thing, service level authorizations, uh, which you might want to configure, which stops every access to a, to a service even before we get to uh, some authentication part, like only username, this username is even allowed to use uh, Yarn or not. 
Next up is data protection encryption at rest. HDFS transparent encryption. So HDFS supports a feature called transparent encryption. I don't know if any of you guys use it already. Okay, it's uh, something where the data is stored encrypted on the disk and it's encrypted on the client and decrypted on the client. That way HDFS itself never sees the key that does the actual encryption. That means that an HDFS administrator can get access to all your data but it doesn't, it doesn't have any value to these guys because it's encrypted with the key that never enters the Hadoop ecosystem or the Hadoop, Hadoop cluster because it's encrypted on the client and decrypted on the client. So, and all I need for this is a key management server that hosts the keys, right? Well, first of all, this key management server that has all the encryption keys needs to be close to your clients and the name node in terms of the network. You don't want to wait for some, some server in China. The next thing, yeah. Uh, the next thing is it should be separately admin administered. But if my HDFS administrator also administers my KMS, then he has access to both the keys and my encrypted data, which isn't, which isn't worth much. And um, you need to secure the access to the backing store, and there's all kinds of things to think about here, but if you haven't used it, then I won't go into de detail about this, but we can talk about this afterwards if you're interested. Um, also, all of this is totally undocumented, obviously, uh, more or less. So now my data is encrypted. Is it enough, as we talked about at the beginning? Not really, because you have metadata and databases. You have log files. You have um, spill files from, from Spark, for example. If you cache data, you, you, you can write it on, on disk, not encrypted. This encryption feature for Spark started in 2.1. It's only in the Cloudera distribution so far, not in Hortonworks as far as I know. Only Cloudera has a, solute, a solution for this, Cloudera NavEncrypt, where they encrypt the files, the meta files on the, on the hard drive as well. It's a uh, paid feature, just saying that it exists. Another thing, data masking. Masking, uh, I assume that you know, but it means that, for example, user cannot see the full, full credit card number and the last four numbers are X'd out or something like that. So, um, Sentry uh, doesn't support it, Ranger supports it, IBM Big SQL supports it, um, some third-party tools exist, I don't, haven't seen any, any in pro uh, production yet, so I can't comment on that. Um, it's something you might need to think about depending on your use case. Encryption on the wire, and there's lots of stuff on the wire. You've got web, web interfaces, you've got REST and Thrift interfaces, MapReduce shuffles your data, you have the Spark Shuffle. You have the Cloudera Manager to Cloudera Agent Server Communication. You have uh, ingest tools and all this stuff. You have, RP, you have RPC calls and HDFS traffic. And that's not even talking about the last point is, in Yarn, you can run any kind of app that you want. Like a user can submit an app and that can communicate. So you need to figure out, do you need two-way TLS where the um, both sides authenticate each other, the client to the server, and the server authenticates the client as well. Documentation for this non non-existent. Which cipher suits are supported? Which algorithms that means, basically? Some tools, um, if you enable HTTPS, automatically disable HTTP, others don't. Missing documentation all around. There's, like, you need to figure this out, basically, yourself. Um, and that I, I've done this, done this for years and I, I haven't figured this out for all tools and I keep a list and try to learn, but this is what I meant. I've, I've got more questions than answers for some of these parts because it changes, changes so fast, no new features so fast. And this is uh, also true for the audit and logging uh, department. All these tools now support more or less um, support auditing but there's no documentation on what kind of events do they audit. So I don't know what to look for. Is like, something missing because it's not implemented? Or did, haven't I seen this event because it, it's, it hasn't happened? Ranger um, aggregates audit logs, but that's asynchronous by default. So um, it's written to the hard disk of the local servers and then shipped to Solar, for example. So um, sysadmin uh, on, the, on the local system can delete the data uh, if he's malicious before it ever reaches my, my audit logging. That's not good, should be a bit better documented in my case. Cloudera has a tool called Navigator that does a bit better um, because, for example, they have some uh, features that, like, um, Ranger drops records if it, if it can't write them to, to the store, and uh, Cloudera has a feature that stops, for example, HDFS um, if it can't write audit logging because otherwise your admin, admin could just force bad things. 
no integrity protection for these logs. So uh, like someone with root access can just change them. Third party tools, not a single uh, of these tools has good documentation. How do they access the cluster? All this stuff, totally undocumented. You need to figure this out before you, before you start. Uh, third party tools, um, paid tools usually. Try to figure this out. Next step, and we're going, getting to the end, um, bring this into production. So we finished the product project and handing it over to the operations team. What now? You need to have regular updates for your operating system. You need to use a configuration management tool, ideally. You don't want to have servers totally configured in, in random, random ways. This, and plan regular updates to your distribution. Don't just update it every two years, because that's going to be a pain. Try to update it as soon as, as possible after a new release. Maybe wait for a dot release. Monitoring. All your logging and auditing is irrelevant if you're not monitoring and alerting on these logs. Um, multiple environments. You need to a place where you can test upgrades. You may need a place for backups. Devs would like an up a cluster as well, maybe. Um, this, for example, you have a development environment to an integration environment to a test QA pre-production production environment. means buying more servers, which uh, people don't like because it costs money, but it happens. Also, might need to think about user lifecycle. What happens when a user leaves the organizations? Where in which databases is this user still stored? And all, all, that, all that kind of stuff. Um, Existing sessions, for example, if someone has a cookie for Ambari and the user is deleted, he can keep using Ambari forever. There's no check that um, this user has been deleted in the meantime. Same for Cloud Data Manager. So, but these things could be, could be important depending on how uh, sensitive your data, data is or your, your uh, rules are in your company. What about cloud providers? This is in question. Um, none of the um, HD insight from uh, Microsoft no security at all, uh, Amazon EMR, no security at all, none of that stuff. So I, we don't have many cloud customers. I'd like to learn more about this, but I, I don't know, and the documentation is basically non-existent. And this is now a list of um, the distributions, personal um, sorted from best to worst in terms of documentation. So Cloudera is uh, the best, followed by Hortonworks, IBM, and last but not least, uh, Microsoft HD Insight. Um, just from personal experience, doesn't mean they are all good or bad, it's just the documentation um, is really important and Cloudera is the best follow by Hortonworks. If it's of any concern to you, um, this is what I, I would follow. Um, thank you for listening. I hope that was useful. It was a bit of a whirlwind tour, but um, as I said, it's a lot of ground to cover, lots of different topics. I'm happy to talk about any of this stuff in detail afterwards. Um, in the meantime, if you've got any questions, just... Uh, let me let me know. And I think we've got two minutes or so. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lars. It was a really a complete checklist for <laughs> everybody who wants to get in production. Um, so it's just 50 slides. If you get it, <laughs> make, make your And then it's a, just a checklist, and then you're yeah. done. Thank you very much. So any any questions? Yeah. Yeah, it was very good, actually. Thank my, you. My question is, there was a lot of gaps probably one year ago still. There were tools basically part of Hive, which were not secured even yeah. by Kerberos. So how is it now? It's uh, in terms of the basic stuff, like authentication and authorization, it's much, much better now. I don't think any of the core tools um, have any... I, I think they all all have all have authentication and authorization. Also, in terms of auditing, it's gotten much better in the core tools. Um, but uh, I, I don't I don't have a checklist of other tools. We we can go through them afterwards. Um, but it's gotten much much better. There's a huge focus on security stuff. Cloudera has a center of excellence or whatever they call it for security. Hortonworks or something similar. So they focus on this stuff also because it gets more spotlight in the news and so on. So I can't tell you this doesn't work and this, um, but there's still stuff that doesn't really work. Um, Thank you. But I can't name you specifics right now. Thanks. Uh, you, you didn't mention the mapper distribution. Um, is that for lack of experience? Or yeah, um, that's totally for That has no, nothing with uh, that I don't think it's good. I just, we don't have any mapper that's selection bias. We don't have any uh, mapper customers, so I've never okay. used mapper. I don't know anything about it. Well, I don't know much about it. Thanks. But Ted Dunning and co are here, the mapper folks, so you're, you're happy to ask them. They know better than I do. So any questions? Then, Lars, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you for coming. And I think we have a break, right?